Hey everyone, welcome to the Division X Technical Assistance Kickoff Webinar. Thank you for joining us today to learn more about the time limited targeted training and technical assistance. My name is Dominique Freeman. My pronouns are she and her, and I am one of the youth support leads on this project. I will begin today by just going over a few housekeeping items. First, we are currently recording this meeting, so all those registered and attending should expect the slides and the recording following this event. Please take note of the mute button that, that is at the top right of your screen. This will help us avoid any background noise and interruptions during the event. Please submit your questions and comments through the chat box. If you are unable to see the chat box, we will have a live question session and you can state your questions then. In the event that you are that we are unable to answer your questions during that live session, we will get back to you later via email. If you are experiencing any technical difficulties, please let us know in the chat and we will do our very best to assist you. Again, thank you so much for joining us and I'm going to pass it over to Antonica to lead our icebreaker. Thank you so much for that, Dom. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miss Antonica Frazier. My pronouns are she, hers, and hers, and I am one of the Division X consultants. And now it is time to learn and hear from all of you. So for our icebreaker for this afternoon, in the chat box, please put your name, pronoun, the state that you're located in, and the role that you serve. In addition to that, please answer one of the following questions that you see. The first one is, what do you hope to get out of this call? And the second is, what is the most interesting thing that you have learned recently? Please feel free to drop your responses in the chat or unmute yourselves. But before you do that, I would also like to participate. And so the quick prompt that I'm going to answer is, what is the most recent thing, the interesting thing that I have learned recently? And one of those is the importance of teamwork when it comes to this work working with your fellow peers, your colleagues, and communication. Communication is one of the most important things when it comes to doing this work and completing projects with your other peers. So it's important that everybody's working as a team, everybody's working together as one, that there is efficient communication throughout the entire process when it comes to this work. And since I answered the icebreaker, it is now y'all's turn. And so please feel free to drop your responses in the chat and I will be reading a couple of these. Oh, I see our first response we have now. If I pronounce your names incorrectly, please forgive me. <laughs> but so far I see several. I see there's people from Oklahoma. There, oh wow, we have people everywhere. There's some people from Oklahoma. Um, I recently learned about the cognitive biases. Thank you. Um, specialist for Oklahoma tribes. Oh, nice. Well, I have a lot, a lot from it. Oh, I see someone from New Mexico, fostering connection staff manager. Awesome. Um, I hope to get the understanding oh, of the TA and will be provided as well on the topics that are eligible. Well, you will be getting that today. Oh, you're new to the role and this is your first time completing the APSR. Oh, so any tips will be helpful. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to take the time to read another. I recently completed a month long course on youth work matters and utilizing positive youth development approaches. Well, now that is awesome. That is great. Now, as you are all participating in the chat, please feel free to continue to do so and answer the icebreaker and I will be going over the agenda. Next slide, please. So for our agenda this afternoon, we will be doing an overview of the, uh, well, we'll be doing introductions of the Children's Bureau and Division X TA team introduction. We'll also be doing a brief overview of the targeted assisted projects, also known as TAPS. We will also explore additional TA services and ways to stay connected. I will now be passing this over to Catherine. Next slide, please. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're in the country. My name is Catherine Heath and I use she, her pronouns. And I am at the Children's Bureau here in Washington, D.C., where I have the pleasure of leading the John H. Chafee Success Foster Care Program for Successful Transition to Adulthood and the Education and Training Voucher Program. 
And I'm also the Division X Technical Assistance Project Lead. On behalf of my colleague, Beth, Beth Claxton, who works also at the Children's Bureau, who is the um, Contracting Officer Representative, we are so happy to have you today for this webinar to hear about this exciting opportunity. And in good government space, we have, of course, affectionately named it with an acronym, the TAPS Project. The TAPS projects are the um, targeted assistance projects that we'll be offering um, Chafee and ETV grantees in order to implement projects. And I know when I was an independent living coordinator for a state, you know, there were so many things on my to-do list that I really wanted to do, but I just needed a little bit of extra time and attention and some really focused technical assistance to be able to implement that on that in partnership with young people. Many of those most important projects had been brought to our attention by young people, letting us know any number of um, concerns that they had, and they also bring to us the solutions. And what we just needed was a small amount of assistance or help or short-term assistance to be able to really put those projects into place. So I'm so excited that we're able to be in the space to offer you the TAPS projects or the targeted assistance projects. Um, please do stay tuned to the rest of the presentation because after we talk about the TAPS project and the application and the process that you guys have seen go out over our listers, we will be talking about the other technical assistance that will be available to you um, until September 28th, 2022. And with that, I'm going to turn it back. I'm going to turn it over um, back to the team. So thanks everybody for joining us. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks to each of you for being with us today. If you could go to the next slide. I'm Fran Stern, and I have the honor of being the project director for the Division X TA effort. I use she, her pronouns, and have been with ICF a little over seven years. During this time, I've had the opportunity to work on a variety of projects for a number of federal clients including the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention and HHS's Office of the Assistant Secretary for Planning and Evaluation and the Children's Bureau. In each of my projects, my work has supported the knowledge and capacity building of states and jurisdictions and the federal government to better integrate the voices and perspectives of those most affected by the programs and services being offered. The Division X TA project is building off these and other lessons learned. My vision for this unique opportunity is to continue the learning and share it with the field to more deeply and meaningfully center the perspectives of youth and young adults in their individual success and the success of the systems who serve them. I'm grateful to be with you today and thrilled to have with me members of this illustrious team <laughs> ready to share their expertise to share a little more about this project and to partner with you and your young people to implement changes most important to us all. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Madison to continue the introductions. Thank you, friend. Hi, everybody. My name is Madison Sandoval Lund. My pronouns are she, her, and I live in uh, the state of Nevada. My role for the, the Division X project is uh, to serve as the lived experience advisor lead and I get to work with this esteemed team to support this work. One thing that I'm most excited about is the opportunity to role model youth and adult partnership to affect systems change. Um, and we are getting to see it live here um, and in partnership with so many great people. Um, so I'm excited to share with you all today all of the different things that we'll be doing to model this work. With that, I'll turn it over to Crystal. Hi, everyone. My name is Crystal Saruya. My pronouns are her, she. Um, and I'm the project manager for the Division XTA project. One of the most things that I'm excited about in this project is just um, having the consultants embedded in certain jurisdictions and regions to really be able to move this work forward and the importance of, of youth engagement. So I'm really happy to be here. Um, and with that being said, I will pass it to Tet Tet. Thank you, Crystal. Tet Tet Rogers, my pronouns are she, hers. I am one of the technical lead subject matter experts for Division X Technical Assistance Project. And one thing that I'm most excited about is just we get to work with so many great young people from all across the nation and soon into all the states and just continue to really grow in that. So really excited that we get to really help and empower. I'm going to pass it to Elliot. 
Hi all, my name is Elliot Hinkle. I use they, them pronouns. I'm in Portland, Oregon, and I am the other uh, technical lead subject matter expert on this project. And I'm really excited about the um, unprecedented partnership of this project and the work that we're getting to do with a, a huge amount of lived experience as a part of the work that we're really leading here. And I will give it over to Austin. Hi everyone, I'm Austin Ragnaris. I use she, her pronouns. I am from North Carolina and I am the project coordinator for this project. Um, I'm excited to see all of the connections that are going to be made and hopefully will last beyond this project. Um, so I will pass it over to Dominique. Thank you, Austin. Now that you've met the Division X, TA leadership team, let's meet the rest of the team, the Division X consultants. We have a total of 13 Division X consultants representing lots of diverse experiences, expertise, and personality. In the blue on your screens, you can see interesting tidbits from each of our consultants. Here we have April, Brianna, who is the team baker, Juana, Gabriel, and Tanika, myself, and Christine, who bravely started an online grief support group. Next slide. We also have Deshaun, who is a foodie, Tiffany, Mary Kate, who has a love for adopting dogs, Shaylee, who is a heavy weightlifter, Crystal, the craft expert, and Eric, who are all on our team. You will hear from Shaylee doing our target assistance projects overview. I will now turn it to Antonica, who can share a little bit more about the Division X consultants. Thank you so much for that, Dom. So I will be diving in into our team's background and our expertise. As you can see, we are located all over the United States. Some of us are actually from multiple states, but this is currently where we all reside. Collectively, we have provided trainings and technical assistance to how many? over 20 states and jurisdictions. Being that we are from so many different states, we all also serve different roles. Next slide, please. On this slide, as you can see, we all serve many different roles on the team at the local, state, and national level. Some of those roles include research assistants, with peer support workers, policy directors, training directors, peer coaches, adolescent therapists, Senator editors, CFSSR federal viewers, and more. But being that we all have these different roles, there are many things that we managed to accomplish. Next slide, please. Some of the things in our roles that we managed to get done and managed to get accomplished was plan and facilitate conferences. We managed to build youth advisory boards, pass child welfare legislations, provide peer coaching, expand and enhance service array. We've also host town halls and round table conversations, me meaningful youth engagement, led and conduct research on certain projects that you will be able to hear from today. And so I will now be turning this over to Shaylee to go over the targeted assistance project. Next slide. Thanks, Antonica. So as Antonica shared, my name is Shaylee Pietmeyer. My pronouns are she and her. I am currently located in Topeka, Kansas. I am a youth support lead on the Division X project, um, and I will be sharing kind of an overview of the targeted assistance projects. Um, so if you hear us referring to this as TAPS uh, throughout the webinar, it's targeted assistance projects. Um, and then just a bit of housekeeping. I know Dom kind of alluded to this at the beginning, um, but if you do have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We do have um, slide slots to address these questions. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about the technical assistance services through Division X. Um, you can see here that STARD, the targeted assistant projects. Um, so it, it's one of many services that is being offered to the states, territories, and tribes um, that are directly operating through that Title IV-E foster care and or the CHAFE and education training voucher program. So um, the ultimate aim is really to improve these services for youth and young adults over the next six months. Um, so the purpose of TAPS is really to help ch the child welfare agencies to build capacity and make sustainable improvements to those policies and practices for young people that are transitioning out of foster care. So if you're looking at that darker circle in the middle, 
Um, and then Division X Technical Assistance Team is really going to leverage its expertise in partnership with youth and young adults to improve these outcomes and advance equity by applying that youth center practice and approach. Um, TAPS will also include youth and young adults voice in all aspects of the project, and we really do recommend um, utilizing this kind of partnership and collaboration within your community and partners within your states and your tribes and your territories. Um, you can see this reflected again in the circle here, um, and we'll dive kind of into other services after we talk about TAPS. Next slide, please. So we can see here, here's the TAPS phases and the timeline. Um, there are five TAPS phases. So right now we're in like the first phase of socializing and announcing the opportunity. Um, so you all should have received an application along with the webinar invitation um, and know that we are currently accepting applications. So the application is the first of two phases in applying for a TAP. Um, so the application is due March 31st at that 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so close the business of that day. However, I did want to mention applications will be accepted on a rolling basis, kind of prioritized by a submission date. Um, then after that first phase, there's a second phase, so that will involve a meeting between the Division X Technical Assistance Team and the requester to kind of gather more information about the application. So really exploring the goals in greater detail and confirming the applicant um, is in a position to effectively advance those desired changes in the problem exploration. Um, and then after sites have been selected, the Division X technical assistant team will really be working closely with the site to conduct a rapid assessment. Um, so this third line here um, and action planning. So some of this work is already being done as we've spent the last kind of few months learning and understanding the work that states and jurisdictions are doing to serve youth and young adults. Um, and then after we've completed the assessment and action planning, we'll go into that 100 day implementation. And while the implementation period may seem kind of short or fast, um, there's supported evidence that can be done that if it's done effectively and that there's leadership commitment and workforce and community buy in that um, it really supports this actionable goal. And then lastly, as you can see, the transition to sustainability. So that 30 to 45 day window, um, really making sure that what's happening is being sustainable. Next slide, please. Now let's talk a little bit about the TAPS application overview. So states and territories and tribes um, directly operating that Title IV foster care and the Chafee and Education Training Voucher programs are eligible for TAPS. Um, so I did want to mention it's up to 12 sites. So through all of the applications, up to 12 will be selected. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the application. So the population areas, it's really wanting to understand um, which population of young people are the focus areas of your training or technical assistance. So looking into your BIPOC youth, your persons in LGBTQ plus and your two-spirited youth, maybe it's um, persons that are pregnant and parenting, persons with disabilities, um, persons in dual, uh, dual jurisdictions or um, adjudication or persons in rural and frontier communities. And then also thinking about within those communities or subpopulations, um, if it's that age range of like 14 to 18 or 18 and older. Um, so thinking through all of that when you're applying. And then you can see on the next one, we've got that identified problem and need um, and the opportunity. So considering current agencies initiatives and really projects um, that are aimed to enhance and improve that youth and young adult programs and services um, that would further benefit the youth and young adult engagement. Um, and then alternatively, this could be considering um, maybe change requests that you've heard from your young people um, that you may not have realized or may benefit from this kind of training and technical assistance support. So moving right down, we've got that desired outcome and goal um, alongside that problem and need opportunity. So really considering questions like um, once it's completed, how do we know that we're accomplishing this? How do we know it's been successful? Um, and really how you can increase that kind of knowledge or the ability of um, what you're looking to get out of this technical assistance or training. Um, and then we've got the potential team members, right? So understanding who will be essential during the exploratory conversation, but also maybe part of the implementation team. Um, so this can include like your agency leaders, your managers, the coordinators, partners, um, your providers, and most importantly, youth and young people. Uh, and Dom will talk a little bit about this when uh, thinking about assembling that project team. 
And then we've got past and current training and technical assistant efforts. So really understanding um, what's currently happening, what has worked, what's not working, um, or what hasn't worked, and what successes can be built upon. So I know I talked at you for a bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on over to Dom to talk a little bit more about the change management process. Don't don't. Thank you so much, Shaylee. So first for our change management process, we will start with an assessment, finding out what is needed to really convert those outputs and those outputs into outcomes. What is really going on within your state, tribe or jurisdiction? Viable change depends on a clear assessment of the impact and it will have um, various parts of the organization. Next, we would prepare. That's creating a vision together to gain support from the organization and those key stakeholders. Here, during this stage, there needs to be an emotional and rational case for change. Then we will go and plan what is our starting point, the route that we're going to take and how we're going to reach that destination together. During this stage, you'll be also able to define the activities and the roles to manage and control change during that execution stage. Next, we are on to implementation. Here is the heart of the change process. During this implementation process, we'll be communicating the benefits of change, removing some of those barriers and coordinating activities that change how the organization operates. Then we move into sustainability. We want to ensure that the change can be sustained in a way that benefits the organization, children, youth, and families in the long term. So, so to be able to sustain that change, we want to make sure that the companies must embed the appropriate mindset, practices, and behaviors at every level. Next slide. So assembling your project team. As you can see on the left, these are all the potential team members. And like we mentioned, part of ensuring that effectiveness and sustainability is making sure that you have the right people with the right skills who are involved at the right time. So some of those team members that you can include looks like your agency leadership or your program manager, um, your IL, ETV, NIDIC coordinator, um, your young and adult leaders, your CQI or your data leads. Um, a part of the application states will be able to identify um, any potential project members that would be essential in that exploratory conversation and in the implementation work. So part of that work, you'll be able to work with those team members to really determine what are those frequencies, methods and goals for communication updates. On the other side, you can see the Division X team and how we will be able to support and work with you and your state project teams. Our team includes your Division TA consultant, project manager. We have other support matter experts, youth development leads, policy and program development. Want to state that it is the Children's Bureau priority that youth and young adults inform and design, refine that implementation um, and evaluate policies and practices that can come from the Division X technical assistant efforts. Next slide. To support this work, the Division X TA project will include a sponsored Division X technical assistance fellow. This person will be a young adult with lived expertise from your state, tribe or jurisdiction. They will be compensated competitively. Um, this will be a sum summer opportunity that will align with the time frame that you will be working with your Division X technical assistant. Um, this will help you to be able to support that sustainability we will have, they will be supported by the Division X um, technical assistance team. So they will be trained and supported by us. This is a really great opportunity to really develop and enhance their skills. And I will turn it over to Shaylee. 
Thanks. So let's talk a little bit about the rapid assessment and action planning. So part of the work is um, conducted through this rapid assessment and action planning. So um, some of it will happen in the application, but most of it will kind of happen during that further explored um, exploratory conversation um, and really defining it there. So when looking at this, we can see like the first one is identifying and assessing the needs or opportunities. So really asking questions like where are we or um, what does this program look like now? And then developing the short and long term goals, um, really thinking about where do we want to go um, or where do you envision the program going? Are there any gaps in resources or services? Um, and then assessing the readiness and building capacity. So um, how ready are we to get started? And then identifying and exploring those potential solutions and strategies. So how do we get there, right? Um, what practical steps do we need to take? And then exploring potential challenges, barriers, or limitations. So um, thinking about not only how do we avoid these mistakes, but how do we um, go about this or what areas may we need to pay a higher attention rate to. Um, and then developing the methods to track progress and adjust that plan or plans accordingly. Um, so how do we manage the journey? How are we uh, checking for quality assurance? And then um, lastly, you can see on this number seven is developing a plan for sustainability. Um, so how do we keep moving forward? And next slide, please. And so through the project implementation, we've got this windy road to kind of share the journey. Um, so awareness um, in our action plan, oh, excuse me, in our action planning, um, we'll include like these key activities and strategies for our project implementation. So um, that being awareness, the buy-in, the knowledge and skills and reinforcement. Um, and then you see with awareness, it's increasing that awareness on change that will be happening. So really thinking about including and increasing the awareness around the identified need or the opportunity um, or the challenge. And then um, it's increasing that buy-in. So having the morale and the motivation and maybe including helping people understand how the benefit of the change will, like what it'll bring um, and how will it include bringing about the intended outcome or goal. Um, and then I, I see knowledge and skills kind of um, on the same level, but one is really knowledge developing and enhancing that knowledge and skills, and then skills is applying that knowledge and skills um, to enhance like whether that's policy, practice, or programs. And then we've got reinforcement, so really working on supporting that transfer of learning through coaching and consultation. So next slide, please. Um, let's go with next steps. So when thinking through TAPS um, and these up to 12 uh, sites that will be chosen, it, the initial application will be due once again that March 31st date um, and accepted on a rolling basis prior to by the submission date. Um, and then the next step after that would be joining that exploratory conversation with the Division X technical assistant team in your regional office. And then after that, there will be a notification of the selection by that April 21st date that you see on the screen um, if you are selected. And I wanted to mention that should you have any questions or ideas, please don't hesitate to contact us at the Division X TA at ICF.com. So let's go on to the next slide. I wanted to hold space for questions um, and we will go ahead and do that now. And if you do have any other questions, note that you can put them in the chat and we'll address them as they show up. Um, you can also raise your hand um, and utilize that function as well. All right, well, I will pass on over to Antonica and feel free to drop those questions in the chat. Thank you so much, Haley. We will now be going over. Oh, thank you so much, Haley, for that. We will now be going wrapped up. Since we wrapped up with TAPS, excuse me, let's talk more about the remaining TA services. Next slide, please. All of our jurisdictions will have access to these other types of assistance, such as peer focused events live webinars, related tools or resources, and our university events. We'll be going over the remainder of these for the presentation. Next slide, please. So, for our universal events, we have three upcoming. 
these universal events are intended for our wide audiences, which includes all of you today for attending, attending our webinar. So for our three upcoming events, our first one is today, which is March 15th, which is highlighting our Division X TA services. The second one is going to be in May, which was building sustainable change with youth and young adult partnerships. And our third universal event, which will be in September, which will focus on reflections of the Division X TA services and projects. How did it go? Some of the successes that you all had and some of your lessons learned. You will want to join our mailing list to get these announcements about our universal event, which Dom will cover towards the end of the presentation. Moving on to the next slide. So for our product and resources, this will also be developed to help support the work when it comes to completing the projects. So some of those products and resources include tip sheets and toolkits. We'll focus on service array for young adults ages 18 and older, structuring those direct payments and meaningful youth engagement and partnership. On our resources list, which is that will be a new and will cover new and existing benefits for youth and young adults. We also will have articles and newsletters which will cover the lessons learned from the field and from the projects created. It will come from Division X Learning Corner and CBX's articles. Next slide, please. Our, in partnership with Capacity Building Center for States. We also will be hosting a peer group events that will include future presentations and peer learning on topics that are related to youth and young adults. In March, we had our APSS, a, excuse me, APSR overview. In April, we'll also have a, a vital documents roundtable. We'll also be doing meeting the mental health and wellness needs for youth and young adults. In June, we'll have our United Conversation Part 2. We'll have supporting special youth and young adult populations. In July, we'll have developing and enhancing youth-centered programs, building youth peer support programs. In August, we'll have hiring and supporting youth and young adults and what would that look like. In September, it is still to be determined. Moving on to the next slide. We will now be holding any questions about our upcoming peer events, universal events, and any tools and resources. Please feel free to unmute yourselves, raise your hand, or also drop any questions that you may have into the chat box and we will answer them. have a project in mind, not sure if I have questions, but are excited to apply to receive assistance. Oh, I see the, Would do you mind um, unmuting yourself to give us a little bit more um, clarity about the project? Hi, this is Rosemary Avangetti, State of Oregon. Uh, Child Welfare Youth Transitions Program. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Uh, we actually just had a meeting this morning. Um, we've had a bill passed through our legislature um, that is uh, going to have us partnering with our self-sufficiency program who has um, some of the funding for homeless and runaway young people. And we have transitional living programs and some direct funding for uh, foster youth to assist with their transitioning out of care. Um, and then on another front, we're also hoping to have better access for the FYI vouchers. So we would love to have your assistance in helping us sort of pull all of these pieces together because they can all sort of intersect um, and see how we can do cross systems, um, collaborations, and building transitional living programs for homeless and runaway youth, foster youth, including our tribal partners, and so just helping us pull all of that together in a quick fashion because the funding is for the current biennium, which ends June of 2023. Um, so creating something um, and putting things in place and moving forward will definitely um, need to have happen quickly. So, so yeah, so that's what we're considering submitting our application for. Um, hopefully my manager who's also on the call <laughs> is of the same thinking. I believe we are. 
Thank you so much for that. Thank you also for sharing about the project. We will be moving on. If there are no further questions, I will be passing this over to Dom. Thank you so much, Antonica and the rest of the team. I want to thank you all as well for joining us today. Please visit the Division X Technical Assistant webpage. You can see it here at the top of your screen. That's uh, www.childwelfare.gov slash youth pandemic support. The website will be regularly updated with resources, updates, projects and your products. So it's a great place to stay informed and stay updated. Following this via email, you will get the slide deck and information, more information on how to join our mailing list. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at the following email, divisionxta at icf.com. Again, thank you all so much. Please stay connected, stay updated. We are looking forward to those applications and continuing some further discussion. Just a final check with Catherine and Fran if there's anything else that they wanted to leave people with before we said goodbye. Just to thank you for all the time and, and for considering the opportunity.